G'day guys, and welcome back to my flash print tutorial series, which is aimed at beginners. However, can probably help, I guess, almost anyone who, you know, just wants to find out a little bit more about the various settings and features within flash print. So up until now, we have been looking at, uh, you know, your various controls along the right hand side, how to import models and so on and so forth. We've gone into slicing basic mode and we're partway through expert mode at this stage. The section we're looking at is the support interface within expert mode. And to start things off, I've got a model in the background, something that is actually, I'm midway through printing this as I'm recording this video, uh, something that needs a lot of support. So we're currently upside down by the way, so that's what it actually looks like, this, uh, this thing. Um, so a lot of overhangs. Uh, now the first thing that I really need to make mention of is, again, if you haven't done supports, you've got that little box on the right hand side, fourth up from the bottom. Uh, you've got two different styles of support structures. Uh, the one we're using here is linear. The other option is tree-like, which I'm not going to actually put it in because it's just going to drag this video on longer than it needs to be. But just obviously put in, you know, what your support structure is and then we can go into our slicer and start fiddling with it. The first dropbox is very important in relation to what we've just done as well because the settings will not affect both equally if that makes sense. So currently we are in the linear support type and if we go into tree like we can see we've got a whole lot less options going on in here. So if you've got if you've got you know linear supports like I do in your current model, editing tree like is going to do Yes, nothing basically. So just make sure that you have got that, that selected with the correct uh, support structure that you're currently using. The first setting that we've got is a percentage, which is our speed percentage. Now this uh, refers back to the base print speed, which can be found in the general interface. Uh, this is on a guider 2 series, so we're in standard mode. Yep, so that's 60 millimeters per second. If you change that to, I don't know, fast, it would go up to 80 and supports would still be 100%. So basically, um, that, get out of there, that percentage is, it lets it use however much you've selected at that base print speed. So we can print at 60 millimeters per second basically, because that's what we've got it at. Going down, space to model along the X and Y axes. So this is the horizontal axes. So this is the horizontal distance between the support structures and the model itself. Basically, if you have it nice and tightly packed, you might get some interference between the supports of the model, which might result in the need to clean it up a bit more uh, once you're done. And going the other way, expanding it, increasing the distance between the, the support structure and the model is going to make it easier to remove. Uh, however, you might have some dead spots between you know where the supports are allowed to print and the model itself because you are increasing the overhang if that makes sense. Uh, it's a little hard to actually just, you know, uh, show in the slicer because we are dealing with absolutely tiny measurements here, like 0.35 of a millimeter. It's, it's small. The next bit down is space to model along the Z axis. So this is the vertical spacing between the top of the support and the bottom part of your overhang. If you decrease this setting, it is going to make it better for finer details at the cost of removability it is going to be more difficult and if we go the opposite direction increase the size of it we will lose some of that detail because there's more room for the filament to drop down if that makes sense you can't print over nothing but it will make it easier to remove it later now i guess for me when i've been using linear i've actually found these settings to be reasonably good for pla uh, other filaments can need a bit of tweaking uh, but a lot of that is also trial and error. Next one down is space to raft. So if you are using a raft, this setting here, a lower setting, is going to help with adhesion to the raft, which obviously helps with strength. But again, as with a lot of these settings, it comes at the cost of removability. The smaller that figure, harder to remove. And with this type of support structure, yeah, it's generally pretty hard to do one side, like remove one side of the support at a time. They generally come out at the same time. 
Uh, and again, that is something that's pretty hard to sort of describe right this second. So we will move straight on to the path shape where I can actually give a little bit more of, a, of an example. So you've got two different path shapes, which is basically the shape of the linear support. Uh, polyline is your standard setting, which is uh, best for removability. It's actually really easy to sort of pull out when it's done, um, provided the settings are right, obviously. And the other option is grid. Now you might notice that the options underneath it, or the option directly underneath it, changes based on what you selected. For grid, we have path density, and for polyline, we have path space. So, I have already sliced this model in polyline at 2mm, so we're going to look at this in slice preview to show you what it looks like. And move it down here, and you can see that it's basically one long line-like structure. So if you're really, really lucky, and this has happened to me a few times, is you can basically grab this little piece down here, pull it, and it'll basically pull all or most of it until it gets to a weak point out in one long strip. I'm sure there is an analogy here where I could think of something or a metaphor, I don't know what it is, an example of something similar in life where it, where it works the same. But that's how it works. That's that's the ease of, of removability that we're talking about in Polyline. Going back into, this, into the slicer, we'll look at the path spacing for Polyline. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase that to 6 millimeters. So what path spacing is, is the distance between the support paths. So that was your 2 millimeters. Putting this back, we'll slice it again, and and basically show you what it looks like. And you can see that the support structures are now a lot wider. What's the benefit of that? Well, obviously less support is going to make it a whole lot easier to actually remove because less fine details and so on and so forth. But the other thing is, you know, certain filaments are actually a lot happier to do overhangs with the correct fan speeds than others. So you might go, okay, my PLA can you know, bridge this sort of gap based on a, you know, a temp tower that you've done. So 6 mil spacing might work, or even 8 mil spacing might work. But then you might go over to, I don't know, ABS or ASA, and I mean, that filament hates overhangs. So you can adjust that setting to better suit the filament that you're actually using. So it's a pretty cool setting. Moving on to grid, and let's have a look at the difference now. So we'll slice it again. So that's the shape of our polyline, one big long line. And this is standard grid setting at 20%. And that is what it looks like. It looks like a grid. Sort of a triangular grid. Now this is a uh, support structure that I actually haven't used before. So uh, I'm not too sure about removability. It is meant to be harder. And you can probably see that it would be harder. Uh, so what's the benefit of grid is actually it, it provides much better support. It's you know, massively decreasing the gaps between um, what is supported, especially with this triangular structure, which is, I think, in the engineering world, it's one of the strongest shapes you can possibly get. So it's just really, really good for support. Again, we've got a percentage here. Now, path density is uh, similar to the spacing, so the smaller percentage is smaller coverage, and I believe the bigger you make that, so if we go 80, 80, can you go 80? Oh, you can't. Come on, do something for me. 30? Yep, cool, I can do 30. So the most you can do is 50, but basically the higher number, uh, better support. Again, it's going to make it harder to remove, it's going to increase the print time, so this is 17 hours, and it's going to increase the material usage. <laughs> and you can see right there, we're now up at 27 hours, so we're, you know, we've added like 10 hours onto that print straight away, and I think we've added like, I don't know, 60 to 80 grams of filament, so uh, definitely be aware of that when using it. But you know, the support structure now is definitely a lot better. So that is the two different supports there. We're going to go back to Polyline for the rest of this tutorial because that's that's really all we need. Um, I don't think I need to show you anything else. I'm pretty sure I don't, so I'll leave that alone. The, the next section is support thickness. Now look, it's a little hard to explain this as the tooltip. It talks just about being more or less solid. Um, 
so it's it's a little bit of conjecture here but I to me it sounds like it's like the extrusion ratio which is something we haven't looked at yet but basically hundred percent is full or standard extrusion so that's you know solid at the path width so the 85 percent would be obviously less solid less thick it's still going to provide decent support so hundred percent better support you know ten percent absolute crappy support so it's still going to give you half decent support but it's going to make it a bit easy to remove rather than just being completely solid to be perfectly honest again when I've used this stuff 85% seems to do the trick um, so I haven't seen the need to change it you you might and again I think I've said in previous videos fiddle around like if you can obviously if you've got cheap filament that you can practice on you know fiddle around with these sorts of things to work out what works best for you fiddle with that cheap stuff anyway the next bit is top solid layers. So the point of top solid layers is it improves the interface between the supports and the model. Again, there's a cost to that. It makes it harder to remove later on. As always, there's always a cost, isn't there? But that's what it does. And if we jump ahead down to this one here, the top solid density is a bit like that support thickness. It is a percentage to affect the top solid layers, if any. And the reason I've sort of jumped ahead is path angle is a 45 degree angle, which is between the, you know, the angle between the printing path of supports and the first layer infill printing path. The standard setting on this is 45 degrees. I've never changed it. I don't really see the point. I don't really know why it matters. If you've got good adhesion, it, I don't know, it doesn't seem to make a huge difference to me. Like the supports are going to get taken off anyway, so it doesn't really matter which way the lines are going. But anyway, that's those two. The second last is horizontal expansion. So, actually, I do need to I do need to slice it so I can sort of try and show you again. So, horizontal expansion. What that is, what slicing is, it expands the support structures outwards by the distance entered to better cover overhangs. So, if I can sort of demonstrate, this one doesn't really have too much in the way of overhangs, unfortunately. So, it's not going to be the best to you know to show you but you can see that we've got slight overhangs going on here if we go into that horizontal expansion and let's whack it up a millimeter slice it again at least you can still see what it does using these little ones here and it's it's pushed them out so on certain high detailed models the support structures won't actually go all the way to the edge they'll sort of finish a little bit before it so to make up for that, that's where that setting here, horizontal expansion, that's where that comes in, is you push it out by that distance to just provide some overhang percentage. Uh, if you've got a surface that's, you know, angled upwards, something to take note of is that the support won't also rise as it goes further out, if that makes sense. So if, I can't really draw it, I guess, but if you've got an angle going up, the support structure is going to come out horizontal to the same layer you know to, to the same height that the uh, the end layer would have been anyway so it won't go up with it so definitely keep that in mind again I actually haven't used it I haven't seen the need to they seem to work quite well without it and it is set to zero now the other bottom section which from memory only affects polyline yep that is correct is print outline so remembering what this looks like here print outline is just rather than trying to explain it or what it does it's just easy to show you and that's what it does we've now outlined absolutely every single one of our supports it is in a, its own little shells or singular singular shells face mode fast mode it's got one one layer around it um, I guess I think what that actually does is again it's designed to help uh, provide a little bit of extra strength with the supports from memory the tooltip is still a little bit vague it's you know to avoid the problem of the incomplete region with line support so I guess it's uh it's just added protection I guess with weird shapes this is you know not a very weird shape so I would not be using it I actually haven't used it Again, haven't seen the need to, but it's obviously, you know, a lot of these features are here in case you need it, not that you have to use it. 
So that is the linear support settings. Now this video is going to go a little bit longer than anticipated, but fortunately tree light is a whole lot easier. Reason being, it's just, you know, speed, 60% of that base speed, so your tree likes being, you know, a lot more of a uh, uh, fragile support structure. Printing it at 100% can run the risk of knocking them over, so we slow it down to help with details and make sure it is printing the way we want it to. Space to model X and Y is the same as what we were looking at in linear. This is the horizontal distance between the uh, the support structure and the um, and the model itself. So a lower distance would mean that we can keep them nice and tightly packed with the model, but we may see us you know we might need to be cleaning it up a bit later. Otherwise, you know a larger distance is going to put more of a gap there and make it easier to remove. The shell count is uh, it's like the I guess that'd be like the uh, the support thickness from linear, so that is basically the strength here. So more shells, more strength, less shells, less strength. The standard setting, which is free, is something that I'm actually printing stuff in the background now, which is using the standard settings, and I mean, personally, I reckon it's coming out absolutely brilliantly, so I haven't changed it. But if you did need to, you know, give yourself a bit of extra strength, you can definitely up that. Uh, the max figure is four, so there you go. I guess if you think of it like this, this is 75% strength, and that's 100. Whatever. The next setting is something that I do like. Auto, setup, z-hop, z-hop, whatever you want to call it, however you want to pronounce it, but basically what this is, is when the extruder is doing movements around the print bed in between different sections of the print, it'll actually lift the extruder, or in the case of most, I think all flash forge printers, which is where the actual bed moves and not the printer, the extruders, the bed will drop to put a bit of distance between the model and the nozzle, move it to the next section, lift it back into position, and go again. So the whole point of that is to, you know, it's to prevent collision with other parts of the model. And that prevents, or helps prevent, you coming back and going, wait, why have I got a plate of spaghetti here? Because it's knocked over one of the, uh, one of the support structures. And yes, that has definitely happened to me. And I think it's happened to <laughs> almost anyone who's been printing for more than a, a couple of weeks if you've ended up with spaghetti at some stage. So the standard setting for that is on, and I would personally leave it. I think it's an absolutely brilliant idea with tree like support structures. In fact, I use uh, Z-Hop in general. I just think it's awesome. But that that is it. That is the various settings for support structures. Hopefully it's enough for you to be able to fiddle around if you so desire. You don't really need to. I do find that they work quite well, you know, if they're set in the right locations. These settings are pretty decent. But if you wanted to play, play. And again, there's nothing wrong with fiddling. Get yourself a cheap roll of filament, play around with them, to, you know, and work out what works best for you. So the next video, we're going to start looking at Raft, which is... A reasonably big one as well. Again, this is personally something I don't use, but I hope you'll join me for it all the same while I explain it again. Till next time.